Yeah, well, can we redo then? So we should hey, do a do funny then? experiment. <laughs> and then, like, no, no, no. <laughs> but I only just oh, cleaned my jumper. Sack mm-hmm. on there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, we need. We to do have a sack on correct, but first maybe. off, we're doing this, okay? Oh. Okay. So we did the. Did we do the procedural? Moment? No, we didn't do that. Okay. What we do? Um. So we're working out. I had I had notes on that. Do 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 do. Procedural. Wasn't that a style? Is that playing or not? You need to find a way to hold it. Yeah, it is. I can't. Everything I say is gonna get Stop talking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna do this. Oh, okay. Stop. No, just look. Is this Steve doesn't get the idea. Do we need the TV yeah. in it? Oh yeah. Someone. Then put it up higher. Get another here. Have another textbook. Yeah, we can't. Okay. Okay. Alright, so first <laughs> oh, off, shit. psychology students, welcome. To the class. Uh, to sorry that you're not here. Please watch this video. Oh, get inspired, and educated. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, what we have is long-term memory. So remember that we did this. You're gonna have to find a way to sit that down, Teresa, so you can actually take notes as you go. Okay. It doesn't get the TV okay. in. So if you need now to you're not set up a them, you're talking You can't even do the TV in you know. it. Like you can't you read it. Okay. The toilet paper. Why do you carry around toilet paper? Okay. In case you can't find a loo. <laughs> yeah, sure, that's good. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Okay. okay, so, um, <laughs> to recap um, some of the stuff that we've done from the last couple of classes, um, we've looked at the divisions of long term memory. Um, you guys know about what declarative and what procedural is. Um, I want to just take a moment to review that one one more time, really quick. Um, okay, I just so, like, wrote all that on the um, okay, so some of the things that we um, needed to remind ourselves of. Um, long term, the long term memory store is probably uh, it's got the most capacity um, of all the memory systems, apart from maybe sensory memory. Um, Short term memory, we know, is, is is relatively limited, so it's got um, a capacity of seven plus or minus two. Does anyone remember whose law that was? Yeah. Miller's law, correct. Okay. Very close. And it suggested Miller. that only we our capacity to remember things in our short term store goes between five to nine. That seven is the average. The way that memory experts from around the world improve that isn't by improving their short term memory because that is biological, it's structured, it does not move. Uh, they basically manipulate the system so that they transfer things into their long term memory um, such that they do remember. Uh, and we're going to go a bit into that, how they actually do that. Um, so you know about long-term memory um, in terms of uh, information. If we actually want to remember something, uh, we need to... So, for example, right now you're going to learn information. Uh, once you revise that information, it will go into your um, long-term memory. Um, and then six months later, you're going to need to recall that memory from your long-term memory um, in order for the exam. Now, in order for you to do that, what happens is it goes from your long-term store into your short-term store, which is like a working bench. Um, and the analogy I used yesterday, which I didn't really explain too well about a week ago, was um, if you imagine if you're typing something into a computer, you encode that information, um, you press save, okay? If you click out of that Word document, press the X button, it's gone, right? But it's still, it can be on your desktop. That is long-term memory, that the icon that it's still there. If you actually want to see what's inside that memory, what that information is, you have to bring it back into short-term memory or you have to open the Word document in order for you to analyze it again. So that idea of bringing um, information from long-term memory back to short-term memory is the exact same as a computer saves something, an icon on the desktop and the hard drive somewhere, and then in order to actually use that again or change it, manipulate it, you need to open up the document again to change it. Um, unlike a perfect computer, however, forgetting um, occurs in the human brain. So a computer, ideally, if it doesn't have any technical faults with it, will remember that information or store that information. Humans, if we don't revisit it, 
you will forget it. Um, and that's a bit different um, to a computer. Okay, so procedural. Um, you guys know what this is. This is the know-how. Um, so again, highlight that know-how section. Um, that's it, being able to do something, play an instrument, ride a bike, as opposed to knowing that something exists, like when you that is. Declarative memory. Um, okay, this is the stuff that we've gone through um, the other day. There's two different kinds. There's the episodic and then there's the semantic. Um, I'm going to skip through this because we've, we've done this stuff. Um, and I want to get into measures of retention. Okay, so uh, this is something uh, new that we're going to look at now. Um, and there are basically three different types of things or ways that we can remember something. Um, if I asked you to... Recall, um, or if I ask you to remember um, all of the presidents of the United States, that would be a recall task. Okay. However, if I gave you a list of people like Barack Obama, Oprah Winfrey, um, George George Bush, recognition would be deciding which of those three people were presidents, um, and hopefully you know um, the two of those that were. So, I'm actually going to give you a recall task now that you guys can do yourself. Um, the first one is the following, okay? Can you... Do we do this in class? Yeah. yeah. yeah we did this one? Okay, all right, we're going to skip to the next one then. Okay, we'll the, the naming the state. Yeah, okay, we're, have we done the states? No. Yes. Okay. Yes, we have. We no, don't we know them. Yes, we, have. we, have. <laughs> we haven't done the states. <laughs> At okay. all, sorry. So, recall is um, basically where you don't really get any cues to recall the information. It's what's called the least sen sensitive. Um, I want you to um, write that into your exercise book, the, that word, the least sensitive. Um, that basically means hardest to remember, hardest to reproduce. sensitive and then there are three different types of recall. You also get the slide, that one, the different yeah. types of recall. Okay, mm -hmm. great, awesome. So um, with that in mind, I'm going to give you the first one which is going to be a free recall test. Okay, so this is in pairs and there's two pairs. You guys are just getting goals today. You're already in pairs. I, you inspire me. I don't know how you do it, honestly. I don't know. Uh, okay, your first task is the following, alright? In pairs, list all the states of America. Okay? Oh, jeez. Yeah, right, here we go. Off. North America. Go. Oh, shit. <laughs> the USA. United States. Oh, okay, so wait, just do it in your pairs. Don't, 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 don't tell anyone. So just in your pairs, write it down, alright? Oh, the Ohio one. California. Uh, Alaska. Just wait. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I know. I don't know. Um. California. Can you put the camera off us, please? <laughs> um, Washington. That's what I was saying. Fuck. <laughs> um, um, this one that starts with P. Pennsylvania. There we go. You can't just keep the same ones there, right? Be quiet. It's doing too loud. Um, Stop it. <laughs> candy apple away. in from. Oh. <laughs> When Abby, Lee. Okay, you're 30 more seconds. <laughs> what the other end I know these? Isn't there like 50 seconds? Um, where's yeah, um, oh. intensity? Damn. We got some. Oh, there's a place called Pensacola. Yes. Like, that's a weird place, right? Let's see if I get sick of it. Yeah, why did I look it up? Because I could. Is that a problem? What are you doing? I don't know if it's recording the TV. Yeah, it is. It is getting the TV. We've got six. Um, out of 50. Did you see how many sets we're going to That's 54. Yeah. How many can you get? How many can you get? Can I Google Six. it? We okay, no, not Google we it. Got okay, one. let's see how many you got. 50. So, what did you get? Which ones did you get? <laughs> California, Alaska, Washington, Pennsylvania. Nevada. Nevada. Okay, Hawaii is one, two. Um, Ohio, Alaska, California, Washington, Florida, and Pennsylvania. Okay. And the right. Hawaii. Okay, good. So, <laughs> that was... That was 
pretty difficult, right? Of 52, um, you got five. All right, so it's like basically seven. less than 10%. Um, got so not ideal, you got just over 10%, okay? So Ooh. nothing we're going to kick goals Ooh. about. Um, we don't live however, in America, though. However, if I gave you the first letter of each of those states, that might have been a bit easier. You might have got 10, 11, 12. I knew half of them um, from friends. Once you started doing it. <laughs> yeah. Abby, um, Dance Okay, so uh, moving forward, um, oh, these are the Joy list of... Oh, oh, Kentucky, Alabama, oh, Wait, is this remembering these ready, ones? Ready, set. This is remembering these ones. Go. No, it's not. It's right oh, happy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Probably have to talk louder. For all you listeners at home, <laughs> I hope you're participating in this activity and getting the same money benefits. No, I don't think it's fine. Um, I think it's fine. I think it's fine. I don't know. It's the oldest dude. Like, you know, Papa? Older. Grandpa? That's not Papa! <laughs> <laughs> That's a snap! Okay, pause. Alright, how'd you go? Alright, what did you get? We got happy, dopey, grumpy, sleepy, bashful, sneezy. Oh, well, you got one, the other, you missed one. I know, we don't know this guy. We got five. <sighs> and right. then oh. Oh. Right, three <laughs> little Where's words, starting with D. Doc. Doc. Yeah. Oh. Why didn't you write that? I didn't know it was <laughs> three little words that start with D. You were close D. when you said papa. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay, all right, so um, now... You got better. So of the however many, you got five or six. There's only seven. seven. Okay, yeah, I know. But like basically, if we did this, because fifty-two would be things, that good. <laughs> well, no, no, we'd just be like happy, playful, <laughs> wiseful, yeah. lovely. Um, so but word. basically, Plot whenever you've got something that you can look at, you can go, oh, what's that? And you can try and remember. Oh, he looks tired, so he must be sleepy. You know, you can you can use cues in order to help Sneezy. you. Better than sicky. Um, we're going to do one more task. Okay, this is going to be even more sensitive. This measure oh. means meaning it's easier to do. Hands up if you like multiple choice more than for a short answer. Uh, hands at home. <laughs> everyone. Okay, so there, why do we think we like multiple choice more than? Because you can you read it options. and interpret it. Yeah. Because it gives you an option rather than you seeking it. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's like exactly oh, it, right? It gives you an option. You just need to choose between two things as opposed to everything has to come from your brain and it has My to be right. So, this is what recognition is. A method um, which measured the amount of attention. That's okay, keep reading. Presenting the correct <laughs> material with other items. This is the more... What? Sensitive? <laughs> <laughs> what? In your clearest, loudest voice so the people at home can hear. A method which measures the amount of retention by presenting the correct material with other items. Distracted. This is the more sensitive measure of measuring, of measuring than recall. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Teresa. So what we're going to do um, is I'm actually going to give you a task that has the actual list as well as some distractors. I'm going to get you two girls up the back to be doing it recall and you guys are going to do it recognition. Okay. So as soon as the task is finished, you guys need to turn around, and then I'm going to get you to um, copy down the words that are on the board that you think were on the list. It'll make sense in a moment. Why? Yeah, it's not. Okay. So in in a, just in a moment, I'm going to put the words up on the board. I'm going to give you one minute. I'm going to time it, and then when the minute's up, you guys are turning around. You've got to read, and you guys are going to. Why are they going to hear it? Okay. No one died. 
okay? Just in case you were wondering what that noise it was. It was just me, it's okay. Okay, it's all right, here we go. Next one. Ready, Spaghetti, Steve Monaghetti. Oh my golly, Gotti. Go. One minute. Do we have to do it in order? <laughs> Those at home should be trying this task as well. <laughs> Do not try this at Stop. You guys turn around. Turn around. You guys turn around. Oh. And then you guys can oh, stay there. And you guys oh, need yeah. to look at this list and you need to write down. But I can remember the menu. Okay, go. So copy the ones from that list. On the board? Down. No, just on your list. Just on the board. Oh, oh shit, old. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, Another 20 seconds. How many oh, I thought you'd look, look, Ashley. How many? What, how many? Ten. Ten. We didn't even have to look at the board, man. Uh, oh, I missed <laughs> one. So am I. Okay, stop. Yeah. Uh, come back. What okay. Was it? So, ferret. <laughs> Can you find it up there? <laughs> this actually proved my theory. Can what? you find it up there? The one you're missing? Oh, yes. Okay, so you got nine, and then as soon as you saw it up here, you got the ten. You guys get ten already? Yeah, man. What okay. was the ten? You got a few, though. I got, so that I got frogs. <coughs> oh, I didn't have tiger. Yeah. Okay, so, but what you're able to do, though, is you go, oh, okay, I remember most of them, but then as soon as you're given a list, you're like, ah, but I actually remember what's on here, as soon as I have to recognise as opposed to recall. So recognition is more sensitive than um, recall. Is that how I remember dashing? Josh. 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 Josh was like obsessed. Yep, remember. that's how I remember that. Um, so does that make does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yep. Recognition yeah. more sensitive Newt, than recall. Like okay, moving through. What's his I name? Thought Newt. Newt. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, the last or the most sensitive measure of retention, however, is what's called relearning. Okay, oh. this method is also called the method of saving. Okay, so can you write this next? Write relearning. In the Okay, and then you put next to it, aka the method of saving. Can you put this on the Facebook group or yeah, 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 I'll have to. We should record all those ones. <laughs> Some other schools do that, and they record. Uh, the teacher records the class before before the lesson, students have to watch it before the lesson, and then in class we just do questions. Let's not do that. Yeah, don't do that. Why not? Do you have a I actually reckon we do better as a teaching the content. Yeah, because yeah. you guys are really good at asking questions. Like you do that constantly. <laughs> yeah, you too, guys. <laughs> Can't see. Come check how long we have left. Um, I think you might have moved that. Can you move that tiny bit that way? Is it on there? Yeah. And the TV? Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> I can like so edit this out right? so that it makes nah, sense. No, I'm just going <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> just like you standing on the thing. <laughs> Why? 
oh, when you were walking that way, and I was like, oh. and I was just looking at you like, he's got a photo? <laughs> <laughs> so when I walked into the supermarket this morning, this guy, walked, like, as I walked past him, he's like, <laughs> I've never seen a guy in a bow tie walk into a supermarket at 7am. I was like, well, probably not. Like, that wouldn't often happen in a store. Probably baby. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, the, the part to remember about the method of relearning um, is that, um, let's give an example. Okay, so before, let's just use what we've just learned. Before today, you'd never heard of measures of retention. Is that fair to say? No, probably not last week. Yeah, but before last week. Okay. Before yeah. you learnt it, Liv. Okay. Jeez. <laughs> you'd never heard of it, yeah? Okay, so if at the end of the year I decided, sorry, right now I decided the best way to prepare you for the end of year 12 was to do no classes from now until the week before exams and then do intensive classes the week before exam. Um, that would mean that you would need to relearn, you would need to learn entirely new concept all in the space of a week. Something that would be very challenging. However, the model that most teachers use, because it's more efficient, is what's called the method of relearning, which is where we go through the whole course content, we aim to finish towards the mid or end of term three, and then we just relearn that content in the last couple weeks or month before exam. We revise and revisit that information. Um, Can we do that? That's exactly what we do. That's what oh. most classes do. Yeah, that's the method. Um, so the way um, <coughs> we've actually been able to calculate a score of how effective um, relearning is, um, and that comes across in this um, savings formula. Savings formula here. Um, I want you to imagine for a moment that. Um, uh, let's just say that just like. Last time, I gave a list of three ten-letter words, like... Do you just do this in your head? Yeah. You're crazy. I'd be using J more than once. Just be like, SMJ, TMJ. <laughs> it's just be the same letters. I can't think of letters on them. I don't know. Just be like A, B, C, D, Like when I'm trying to write, like, scripts okay. right. keep so writing K. Having a look at these three letter words. With numbers. Um, what we're going to do um, is... What is that letter? We're going to do a bit of a role playing here for a second. Which letter? Oh, is, that, is that bottom yeah. one? Daniel no, Kavanagh. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what I want you to do, and um, we're going to have two trials of this. I want you to remember these ten letter words. You've got two goes to do it. So you're going to have your first go, and you're going to have your second go, and then we're going to have your third go. Okay? So you're going to have one minute. Go. I'm going to start the time now. Um, and then you're going to have to recall. In order? No, it doesn't matter in order. Is it an I? Yeah, I think so. The second one. Yeah, it's an I. What's the middle one? Q. L O P. No, it's Q. <laughs> Are they all teachers? Mm. No. I've already tried. Time, go. Woo! Come on now. What was the first one? <laughs> oh, yeah, I've lost it. I don't remember. I like three, but that's in the wrong order. F something something. Um, what well, as many it? as you can. As what many as you it? can. Um. Oh. It's close to quite many. This is a. Oh. Okay, pause, stop. How many did you get? One, two, two three, three, four, five, six, I got seven, seven, eight, nine, 
seven. Nine, seven, four, <laughs> and seven. I got okay. seven. What do you All get? Right. Seven. Oh. You can get one more go. I don't Another want any more. No, no. Uh, just let me look. That one's wrong. I only got eight. <laughs> okay. Okay. Try again. Try again. Yeah. Now I can just cheat off my page. No, you're gonna have to. Turn over the page or say something. I'll cover it. <coughs> Why? Well, then I have to use another page. <laughs> I always had them in order. It was the J one. Oh, you're in the <laughs> way. <laughs> Is that T I C? T L C. T L C. Tender love and care. Oh. Rubbish I used before. That's a in. I've just written the same one twice. Um. Um. Okay, stop. How did you get? Head. Ten, alright. Eight. Uh -huh. Nine. Nine. Okay, they're correct. Uh, oh my god, I got them all. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. We're going to use the scores that you just guys got here. And I want you to calculate your saving scores. So all, so you went, I think, actually, I believe you were here, weren't you? Let's switch those over. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do it up there. Number of trials. Um, oh. Okay. I'm going to, okay, I'm going to review it. Okay. I want you to imagine <laughs> that, um, okay, so we've got Kirsten, Liv, Teresa. <coughs> Okay, I want you to imagine, Kirsten, you did it in two goes, which you did. Um, yeah, okay, Liv, you did it, let's say, in five goes. Um, Teresa, you did it in four goes. And Ashley, you did it in four goes. Um, I want you to then say that Kirsten, you did it in one. Liv, you did it in three. Teresa, you did it in two. And then Ashley, you did it in two. Okay, and I want you to work out using this formula what your formula is. You need me to make a roll. Pi r squared. That's oh, it's close. Okay, so using that formula, work out your answer. Is that is it wrong? No, no. It is. Um, you're not doing an outcome or anything. Not right now. Not period four. Yeah. We'll yard clean up the end of. That's all I need. That's, on I've got basically no kids in here, so that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, so we will get to clean up the yard. Yeah, cool, that's fine. I, Who let us down, Mr. Hart? It's good time. Yeah. We cleaned our gun. <laughs> yes, but that was only after I went out there and roared at just... Oh, okay. But I will say that some people did respond, however, not enough. Okay? Oh, okay. Thanks, Mum. Do we get yeah, the thingy back? It's very oval. Have you seen the oval, though? It's disgusting. Oh, yeah, yeah but who's out on the oval? Who is it? That's the not added us. Acids. No, it's Take a picture of the kids that are out there and make them. Hey, hey, can we take a picture of back up? Like sneaky pictures. The, the, the. There you spy. How do we do the formula? Where do you get these trials? You were saying how to me how to do it. Is it the number of trials for original learning, the top one? Yes. And then the bottom one for relearning. Yeah. Okay. Have you got your score? Um, no, not yet. I was the same time. I don't even know what I'm saying. So it's four take two over the same number? Yep. I mean, mine's 100 over one. What's two over four? So you improve by 100%. Yeah. 
It's half. No, you should Wait, be yeah, so mine's by 50%. 4 minus 2 over 4 is oh, yeah. what, 5. Over four. What? 4. So, I what, am I 2 minus 1 over 1? No. Original learning, how many times did it take you? 2. 2. So 2 minus 1 over 2. Huh? <laughs> yeah, no, right. Something. Okay, you got yours, Ash? I agree fifty percent. Yes, correct. Same. I'm yes, asked. correct, Teresa. <laughs> what am I then? Two minus one. Yours will be fifty percent too then. Mine. Yeah. Oh, no, yours. yours will. Mine. Yeah, because yeah, it's half. And then hers will be some shit number that I don't want to work out. Language. Some bad numbers. Why? Well, it will be five, so it will be sixty percent. Let's do Kirsten's two. Original times minus one relearning over two. So yeah, but equals one over two equals fifty yeah, percent. And then why? hers will be sixty. Because I did it faster than that. So why will I? The, the your relearning was the same no, speed. No, no, it will be forty percent. Whilst you were quicker, you did do it in less times. Yeah. But it just five this minus just three, proves the point two, that relearning two has the same uh, uh, across the board. The benefits of relearning. Oh, yours will be forty percent. Oh, I'm all good. good. You're not yep. Lives would be 40%, like, wouldn't it? Oh my god. Lives would be. Yeah. yeah. Is that. Yeah. So what did you get, Liv? What, what were your numbers? I got 40%. Okay, so how'd you do it? You did what minus I did it, it and told her. Okay, so how many times did it take you the first time in this hypothetical situation? Five. Five. So then you have to minus by what? Three. Three, because that's the relearning. Yeah. And then over how many? <coughs> How many times it take you to do it five. originally? Five. So five minus three over five is two over five is forty percent. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys need to remember this formula because you might need to compute this in an exam. Oh Why God. is it one there? It's got the line and then. Hundred over one. You just have to do that to get a percentage. Well, I don't. Do, do, do. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Oh, okay. Okay. If you want to copy down the formula, do it now. Oh, I forgot savings. that it was by Ebbinghaus. Uh, write it down next to it. Can't hurt. Um, you can also do this for time. So if I change this to um, minutes, you two minutes the first time, Your savings scores change? No. Numbers haven't changed. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why'd you scribble out my STR? I was going to scribble a little bit. Oh, thank God. Okay. Yeah, Alright, any questions one. about this? <laughs> What's the most sensitive measure of retention? The most sensitive. Recognition. Most sensitive. Yeah, that one. Learning. I was going to say. Hey. Learning is the most sensitive. Yeah. Okay. Recognition is second. And what's the least sensitive? Recall. Recall is the hardest. What of recall, the three different types of recall, free, free. serial, and cued, what's the hardest type of recall? Free. Free recall, because you have no cues. As opposed to serial, which is like you can go, um, you can remember things in order, which makes it a bit easier, or cued, where you get a little hint and then you have to say what it is. Okay. Um, in that sheet there, I want you to write down a one sentence. What is the difference between cued recall and recognition? Write down what is the difference between cued recall and recognition. Okay, so write that down.
It would be more sensitive, that's true. <laughs> What's the difference? <laughs> Regog. Um, well, Cube Regog, you have parts. But recognition. I thought we were going to do recognition. From the dwarves. No, that was Cube Regog. Um, but they're... Mm. I'm not going yeah, it was too. Oh. Recognition. Um, can be more for that. Yeah. Um, I don't Let's have a go. Um, Ash, what did you write down? Um, mine was just basically that recognition is easier to do mm -hmm. than Q recall because you have it's more sensitive. Than you, yeah, you need to explain why in terms of the task itself. Okay, did anyone get to that? What did you write, Kirsten? Um, I wrote. Cues, I don't think it's right, but I wrote cues are allocated randomly whereas recognition is a specific retrieval of data or memory. But is that like, so cues can bring on other memories while well as recognition just is a specific? Okay, so um, be really careful about your language there because recognition doesn't involve recalling information, it's choosing between oh. two alternatives. So, okay, so can you read out your response? To his well, I don't point that, but I said that um, recognition is like picking the right one when knowing like information. Yeah, choosing the choose. Yes. The correct response from different alternatives. So it's either A, B, C, or D. See, yes, One of these choice. is right. One of them, and the rest are wrong. Whereas recall, cued recall, is what? <laughs> Prompt. Yeah. Is right. <laughs> where you are given prompt. And you must recall the correct response. So you could sort of think of it as recognition is multi-choice and cues are shorter? Yeah, but think of this language. Choosing the correct response from different alternatives and cued recall being given a prompt and you must recall the information from your own memory. Choosing the correct response from two different alternatives, whereas Q recall is where you are given a prompt and you must recall the information from your memory.
Alright, that's the first part of the class. Um, this next section, we're only going to go through in about 20 minutes or so, um, and then we'll turn off our, to our friends at home and we will go on with something else. That is fun. Um, okay, we've got to introduce ourselves or start talking about the different theories of memory. Um, you've already looked at one. Um, so, I, sorry, a learning intention is we need to be able to identify and explain various models of memory. This learning intention will be with us for the next couple of weeks because this is what we're trying to do as we go through different types of um, memory models. And there are three major ones that we look at. You've already looked at one. Does anyone remember what that one is called? Who remembers what that, what's that called? The memory model. Oh, the modal, uh, the modal model is also, also called the what? Atkinson Schifrin model, yeah, is the multi story. Yeah, I was like, what we'll like, nah, I'm not, I'm not yeah. saying that. Um, this is this one here. So, this model here, um, you've got information coming into sensory memory. So, what's those arrows on the far left there? What do those arrows represent? Incoming information. So it's Example. In. Hey? Example. Um, talking, loud noises, Great. Awesome. pictures. What else? Pictures, what visual, auditory, smelling, touch, all those things. Okay, it, it goes into the sensory memory. Okay, unless you pay attention to it and it moves along into short term memory, it is lost. So, and it's just like that example if I say, um, ask yeah. you a question, I say, Ashley Green, what did I just say? You said. Let's just say we'll ask you a question. And Great. That's all you okay. said. <laughs> but you weren't really paying attention to me at that time. You were looking at your pencil case, but you were able to recall that information because even though you weren't paying attention, we have an echoic memory. Remember echoic memory? What kind of memory is that? Echo. Echo, so therefore it's sound. Sound. Wonderful. Well, that stays in your memory for anywhere between two to four seconds. So even though you weren't paying attention, you could still capture that information even if you weren't paying attention. However, once you pass that two to four seconds, it's out. All right? If you did pay attention, it has gone into short-term memory. Right? From there, it, it can either decay, if you don't think about it again, or it can be displaced. So new information comes in and kicks it out. Um, if you rehearse the information, which is what we're going to look at in a second, it can then get put into long-term memory. Okay? Which, as we proposed before, stuff can still happen in long-term memory where you lose that information. This is called the multisaw model of memory, or stage theory of memory, and it was proposed by Atkinson and Schifrin. So can you write that down, that the different names for um, that there, please? These slides will all be available on the Facebook page as well. other things about the model. Oh. Um, the three subsystems, um, which is the sensory memory, short-term memory, and long-term memory. Um, and each of those differs in function, capacity, and duration. What is the duration of sensory memory, Olivia? 
A couple seconds. A cold memory is two to four seconds. Uh, Teresa, what is iconic memory? I don't know. Is it longer or shorter than a cold memory? Longer. Mm -mm. Shorter. shorter. Point Why? like something second. Point okay. four. Yeah. yeah, it's very short. Like point two to point four seconds. Um, why is the cold memory longer than short term? Then iconic. Is it echoey? So it's got a register on something. But why is that important? <laughs> you forget what you heard as soon as you hear it. Yeah, in terms of language. Yeah, the picture you can capture the information and it can go. It's not as important. Whereas a sentence or a word like this word computer or long jokes computation. If you didn't, if you forgot, if it only lasted 0 0.2, 0 0.4 seconds, you would think I'm just saying random syllables, computation, and that'd all be different words. So we actually wouldn't be able to have a language unless we were able to do this. Unless we were able to have the cold memory. Um, duration of uh, short term memory, what, how long is that actually been? Isn't it like, oh. Short term memory, isn't it like you lose the mem you can you lose most of the information by twelve seconds, but it can last up to eighteen to twenty? Correct. Yeah, eighteen to twenty is what it, it you can lose in, in information even sooner, um, but by eighteen to twenty seconds it, it mostly mostly it's gone on, gone away unless you've rehearsed the information. Okay. Um, so with that in mind, um, let's have uh, quick look of uh, at memory, um, short term memory. Um, we've actually gone through this in class when we last week, so I won't spend too much time on this. We know short term memory, it's, it's got a limit to its storage capacity, which is what? Again, you should be paying attention. What's the limit short term memory? Wonderful, plus or minus what? Two. Two. Good. Um, and then, just like we said, it's like a Word document that you open up and then you can edit. Um, so long as you open it from long-term memory. Um, okay, there are two types of rehearsals. So this is the new um, information. Um, I want you to get these down. So can you write rehearsal is the active manipulation of information so it can re be retained in memory. There are two different ki kinds of rehearsal. They don't know what they are. I've mentioned them once before, last week. Jason mentioned them. Two different kinds of rehearsal. Any takers? Give us a hint. Uh, how about I actually show you the first one? <laughs> The first one is what's called maintenance rehearsal, and this is the repetition of information over and over again so it is kept in short term memory for longer. Okay, so let's copy, let's get this, let's get this information down. A couple of things you need to know about maintenance rehearsal. It can be verbal. So that is saying it over and over again in your head. Or it can be non-verbal. So um, it's like if you... So I think about it in terms of... Uh, 
what's a good example to give you? Okay, so basically I could ask you to look at me, and I could say, close your eyes, and I could say, how many buttons does my shirt have? Sorry. After you've closed your eyes. You can't even see your buttons. Yeah, you can't. Ha-ha! <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see, one. This will make it very challenging then. Um, but that would be the idea, is that you're trying to keep the image of the person, of the whiteboard, whatever it is, in your brain until um, you no longer need it. Um, you, that last bit there, verbal tends to be the one that most people use. All the clocks in the school are wrong. It's really bugging me. Oh, I just do. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> okay, the second type of rehearsal is what's called elaborative rehearsal. We're almost out of okay. time. Hey? Almost. It's almost out of life? Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's okay. red. Um, well, we'll quickly go through this and then we'll revisit um, so that those guys can still hear it. Okay, so a couple of things. Elaborative rehearsal. Um, the process of linking new information in a meaningful way with information already stored in memory with other information um, that's new. So, um, I'm going to give you an example. Uh, how much battery does it have? I don't know, it's red. Yeah, we've got like five minutes. That's good. Okay, so I'm going to give you an example from my phone. That's really hot. <laughs> but, uh, uh. So just, um, sort of we'll paraphrase that first little point, and then I'm going to give you an example. Just stop when you get the, um, after you paraphrase the first one, and then I want to give you an example, alright? So, right now I'm going to give you something new to learn, I'm going to ask you to remember it, and then explain it, what it means to me, okay? First way I want to do this um, is just using maintenance rehearsal. So when I, when I explain it to you, I want you to just use maintenance rehearsal to try and remember it, and then also tell me what it means. Okay. The Glox counteracts negative electromagnetic waves often encountered by instructors in the classroom. <laughs> the Glox counteracts negative electromagnetic waves often encountered by instructors in the classroom. Teresa, go. The Glox counter something, something in the classroom. Okay, what does it mean? It's like a clock. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought it said clock. Yeah, but like, but I thought... like he said it a bit weird. Electromagnetic waves. That's what uh -huh. it is. What, so, but what does it mean? Uh, it means that the clocks are very important in the classroom. Okay, but we don't actually know what it does, what it is. What right. is a clock? Okay, no, let's just gone. imagine that. Oh. This banana bread was a whole bag of lollies, right? Oh, <laughs> and it was really exciting. Um, and you guys are coming today, right? Okay, let's imagine it's not here. You guys are coming today and you're really sad because the year 12s went here and you were crying. So there were some bad vibes. Yeah, there's some bad waves in the class. There's some mm. bad vibes. And then, whoa, what up? Here comes Mr. Kavanaugh with his Glocks, aka okay, bag of lollies. And then suddenly, you guys are all excited. It's like, oh my god, we've got food, we're happy, this is so much fun. 
Get the idea? Yeah. A Glocks is like a, basically something that prevents people from being upset. Teresa put it away. So, for example, this makes you happy and therefore you're not going to um, be upset. So, does that make more sense than the first example? Yeah. Yeah? So, do you think in six months' time that you would be able to remember this example more than the first example? Yes. Yeah. Okay, why? Because it's in words we already know. One. The meaningful. Good. And it's You're linking it. Two. With like a Happy. positive experience. So why? There is like an extra element to remember mm. rather than just like the one thing. I think um, joining maybe what a couple things and you were saying just under your breath in, the, um, that second part there relating to personal experiences, that's like whenever you relate, like try and understand something in, in your own context, you make it easier to understand. If it's just vague, abstract things that you have no relation to, it's very hard. But if you go, oh yeah, I get it, I'd be happier if my teacher brought in more lollies, then it's mm -hmm. easier to understand. You should take that as a hint. Oh, okay, all right. Um, Okay, so that's elaborative rehearsal, all right? Um, so it's, it's all about quality encoding, okay? Um, I'm gonna move through this and I, you can copy down the last parts once we go back. Okay, so two different types of rehearsal. Um, well, we won't do this example because... Um, Hello, yes, wig, psych, laugh, princess, home pie, apple sundae. Um, I won't go, I'm going to go through this Pentagram pegwood system at another stage, lady, another yeah. time. Oh, you yeah. told um, us how to do that last year. Yeah, I did, yeah. Um, and what we find is that basically elaborate rehearsal is better. Just like how we demonstrated here, elaborate rehearsal is better than maintenance rehearsal. Because it also goes into long-term memory. Okay, the last thing I need to um, teach you for today, um, that includes for our listeners at home, is the serial position effect. Um, Okay, the serial position effect is the following. You can summarise the entire serial position effect in the following graph, which is what I want you to draw in your books. Can you get a new subtitle that says serial position effect, please? Is this video going on Facebook? Yeah, if it's... Yeah. Okay, let's see what Okay. Wait, now I need to write this. We have to write down that paragraph. And we've got an, a minute and a half left. Um, uh, I'm going to show you this graph in a second. Um, just yeah, write down some heading and yeah, can you? Okay, I'm just going to explain this for the benefit of the video. The serial position effect basically shows that we tend to remember things at the start of a list and the end of a list more than things in the middle. So the serial position effect can be displayed by the following things. If I gave you 10 things to remember, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, you would more often than not remember the first two things, and the last two things, and the ones in the middle. The reason for that is what's called the primacy effect, um, because it's maybe the first thing you start paying attention to that you have to remember, and therefore you remember it better and also the recency effect. And the reason why that might be is that it was the last thing that went into your memory, so it's probably still part of short-term memory. Um, and we find that even more so that when you delay um, the recall task, then people um, don't remember the last things as well. So the primacy effect happens because we usually, it's like when, you know how they say first impressions count, you usually remember the very first thing. Um, and we usually remember the last thing. However, if there's time between when you have to remember the task and when you have to recall them, then um, the recency effect doesn't show as much. Um, okay, we're going to leave it there for you. Thank you for listening at home, and then I'm going to explain this stuff in more detail with the others. Stop. Just uh. one.